we're talking about fairness here. We're talking about the due process clause. And even if this is totally unclear for people litigating in these cases, we have to follow this path because this is what fairness requires. Civil procedure basically tells you how our court system works. It gives you a sense of what the relationship between federal courts and state courts uh, is and also what the rules for, for operating in this context are. Now finally, Marshall, and this is interesting uh, in light of the discussion we're going to have about Burnham, talks a lot about history and tradition. And Heitner had really relied on history and tradition in arguing that uh, Delaware's exercise of jurisdiction should be upheld. And Justice Marshall says, well, uh, okay, I know that we have uh, history and tradition and that these have been important to us at other times, uh, but uh, neither history nor tradition can provide an adequate justification for a rule that raises due process concerns. The way that I structure my civil procedure class, there are a number of questions that you have to answer to really know the course. You've got to know who can be sued, where they can be sued, uh, what law applies once you get to the right court. And uh, Burnham is really a case about where it's proper to sue defendants. I'd like to talk about how the court actually applied the minimum contacts standard. Because okay? the first part of Justice Marshall's opinion is all about, well, should we apply this standard? And then he goes on, and he really makes Justice Brennan mad when he does this. Then he goes on and he applies the standard in this case. Everybody needs to know this course. Uh, you may never, uh, after the first year, learn anything about property or hear anything about property uh, or hear anything about contracts. I certainly never did in my work as a civil rights attorney, but you're always going to have to be figuring out what's going on in your court. It's probably easiest and best for you to think about this case as doing away with the distinction for jurisdictional purposes between in personam and quasi in rem. Okay, so that means we no longer have two different standards for evaluating these contexts. We use the same context. No matter what you're doing, uh, whether you're a corporate attorney, whether you're a litigator in a big firm, whether you're a litigator in a public interest organization, you're always going to have to be familiar with uh, the rules for how somebody can be sued and where they can be sued.